Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. Welcome to the Leveling Up podcast and this is George Swift. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'm here to give you the inspiration, the motivation and to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Hello and welcome. Today's episode is inspired by one of my Extreme Growth Mastermind members who's absolutely smashing it this year. She smashed it last year. She smashed it the year before that. And she's taking her business to the next level. It's so impressive. And everyone who hears her story and everyone that meets her and any new members we have in the group are always inspired by what this lady is doing in her business. And she said just this week to another member, she said, of course, we're struggling to keep up. We're growing so fast. And in that moment, when you hear that, not only is it testimony to the success that she's having in business and the speed at which our members in Mastermind are growing, but also it clearly demonstrates why it's so important that you have to continually level up yourself and not just work on your business. In her words, of course, we're fighting to keep up. We're growing so fast. I want you to level up in your business. I want you to have massive business success. We're committed to every single one of our members to achieving extreme growth in their businesses, but we back it and we support it with an ongoing personal development and entrepreneurial development plan. It's so important because if you don't keep leveling up, you become the limitation in your business. Your business will start to run away from you. You'll be playing catch up and invariably you'll become the weak link in the chain. You'll be the person that's holding the business back. You'll be the person that's stopping you from achieving the ongoing extreme growth that you could have and the ongoing success that you could be having in your business. So I don't mind if you end up fighting to keep up with your business. I don't mind that. Just like this lady said, you know, we're fighting to keep up with our business. That's okay. That means your business success is charging ahead and you're fighting to keep up. That's okay. You just don't want to fall too far behind. Ideally, you want to get ahead of the curve. But here's the thing. When you're going for extreme growth in your business, sometimes you don't know how fast that extreme growth might happen. And typically, you know, we're pacing along with our business and, you know, we might be doing some personal development and growing our business and doing some mindset work and growing our business. But then if we keep on applying, applying positive strategies and successful tactics in our business, then it's possible that your business may run away from you and you have to chase a little bit to catch up. We see this often in success groups. We see this often in our masterminds. The businesses start to take off. The businesses become super successful. And our business owners, our entrepreneurs that we work with, suddenly they have to really level up rapidly and they have to level up quickly. I don't mind this, right? That's a call to action. When your business is running away from you a little bit, it's a call to action to step your game up, to go back and do the work you need to on yourself. Maybe it's some, some personal development. Maybe it's some entrepreneurial development. You might have to overcome some personal limitations, some personal belief issues, you might have to get over some limitations that you have in terms of your expectations. You might have to think bigger. You might have to step up into a different role in your business, create a new vision for your business. You might have to develop some new skills and abilities. It just makes sense. But if your business runs away too fast, if your business grows too fast, you will become the person that holds it back. You'll be reining it in either consciously, deliberately, or unconsciously, you'll be holding the business back. Now, the truth of the matter is, most business owners don't do any personal development. And what that means is that their business is capped. 
most business owners may do some entrepreneurial development. So the way I separate these two definitions, personal development is you, it's your belief systems, it's your values, it's what you expect as a person, your performance indicators, you know, like what's hard work, what's not hard work, what you should be able to expect from life and your limitations in what you expect from life and all these sort of things, right? It's you as the person. Entrepreneurial development might be your leadership skills, your stepping up into management, maybe, you know, creating a bigger vision for yourself. And then of course, if you're talking about business skills and acumen, etc., it could be developing a business plan, strategies, you know, planning, it could be, you know, goal setting and all these sorts of things. But if you don't, do your personal development as a human being. You don't level up into the role, into the person that you need to be in order to create the success that you want in your business, then inevitably your business cannot be as successful as it otherwise could be. Don't be the weak link in your business growth. Don't be the weak link in your success. And it's simple, not easy to make sure that that doesn't happen. It's simple You need to be constantly improving yourself. You need to be leaning against yourself, challenging yourself, questioning yourself. You need to put yourself in an environment that challenges you. In fact, one of the things I'm most proud of with Bigger, Brighter, Boulder is the environments that we've created for our ambitious business owners to make sure that they consistently, continually level themselves up as people, as entrepreneurs, and work on their businesses to grow their businesses and level up their businesses. You need to be in a similar environment. It's very hard to make sure that you're continually doing what you need to do when you're left to your own devices. We get caught up in our business. We might get caught up in ourselves. We might get caught up in our skill sets or our abilities or training, and we forget that we have to keep growing all these areas. We have to keep moving forward on all fronts. Yes, we have to absolutely get greater skills in business and we have to level up ourselves as an entrepreneur in terms of our thinking and our application of who we are, our skill sets. We have to get better with money. We have to continually develop new products. We have to hire well. We have to train well. We have to lead. We might have to up our game in marketing and sales in all these areas. But it's important that we also work on the business and continually improve the business, the business practices, the systems, the methodologies, the processes, the products, the services. We also need to make sure that we're continually making sure that we are not getting in the way. We need to work on those areas of ourself as a person, as an entrepreneur, and the areas within our businesses that are holding the overall projection or trajectory of success. You would be unquestionably more successful than you are now if you had deliberately, consistently applied a process for developing yourself, developing your entrepreneurial skills and developing and growing your business. It's unquestionable. At different times, you need to put your energies into different areas. This lady, for example, which is saying, of course, we're fighting to keep up. We're growing so fast. So you know what, right now, she is at risk of becoming the weak link. So now she's going to need to focus on herself to a greater degree. Of course, she still needs to focus on her entrepreneurial self and she still needs to focus on the business as well. I don't want her to stop growing her business while she takes six months out to to, do a sabbatical to work on herself so that she can no longer be the person that's potentially going to slow the business growth down because, of course, the business growth will have slowed down already. You need to be working on all fronts at all times and you need to apply yourself to different degrees depending on where you're at. If you're facing a huge business challenge and your mindset's in a good place and your skill set and your entrepreneur skills, etc., and your entrepreneurial attitudes and everything else are in place and it's not you that's slowing things down, then, of course, you need to probably go you know, not all in per se, but you want want to go all in on your business for a while. Solve those problems, get stuck in, remove the weak links in there, remove the weak cogs, get the thing moving forward again. As it starts to build momentum, you get back on your personal development, you get back on your entrepreneurial development. At some point, the business might kick in, bang. This lady's going from, I think it's about 180 this year, and she's tracking to well over 400 this year. So to go from 180 grand to over 400 grand 
requires not only a great degree of business acumen and business skills, it also requires you to perform and function extremely well as an entrepreneur, but it also requires you to step up and become the person, the entrepreneur that owns, that runs, that leads a 400 grand plus business as opposed to 180. Now add to that, that she went from 100 to 180 in a year and add to that that she went from 50 to 100 the year before that and you start to see a very steep trajectory in business success. 50 to 100 to 180 to 430 I think she's currently going for. Next year she'll be going bigger again. So there's a lot for a person to do to keep up with that. To be someone that's running a 50k business is a very different person that runs you know, near one half million pound business. I see it myself in my group. So when I look at my success group members, and these guys are typically, you know, into their low to mid, you know, five figure mark. So 20, 30, 40, maybe 50, 60,000. And I see how they're operating and I see what they're doing in their business. And I see how they're thinking. And I see them as individuals, as human beings. And then I look at my success group plus members who are typically not dissimilar in terms of turnover, probably more like, you know, the 40, 50, 60, 70 mark. And these people are absolutely fast tracking themselves and their business to 100K. And I see who they are as individuals, as entrepreneurs, and I look at their businesses and their skill sets, their acumen and how they apply themselves. And then I compare that to my masterminds where I've got people doing 100K plus. And I've got people in there doing, you know, just over the 100 grand. I've got some people in there doing quarter of a million and I've got people doing half a million in one of my masterminds. I've got someone in there tracking 10 million pounds this year, a business that's doing 3 million plus, another business doing 2 million, another one doing 8 million. And I look at the different levels and you can see the leveling up process in front of me. You know, it's like a, it's like a staircase. And it's really clear for me running these clubs and working with these businesses and their owners, it's really clear to me to not only see how the businesses obviously are so much bigger and how at each level, the way the businesses are run and the operations behind them and that, how they get more sophisticated, sometimes they get more complicated. They certainly become more businessy as you go through the ranks. And you can see that the business owner, you know, is a, a different beast you know, the, the business owner themselves, the way they think as an entrepreneur, the way they act as an entrepreneur, the way they perceive the marketplace, even what they consider to be a small amount of money or a big amount of money. You know, to a 50K business, a 10 grand deal is going to be a big deal. When you're a 5 million pound business, it's very possible that 10,000 pound deal is actually going to be more hassle than it's worth. The small business might struggle with the challenge of hiring a single employee. The bigger business has no problem hiring five or 10 people at a time. So you can clearly see that the businesses have grown, the businesses have leveled up. You can then see the leaders, the business leaders, the entrepreneurs within them, that they've leveled up as business leaders. You can then see also behind the scenes, the, the person, the human being that sits behind the business person. You can see how they have had to level up to get there. It's so clear when you see these people and you work with these people closely to see the gap between the 50K business and the 10 million pound business. And I can even see it between the 3 million pound business and the 10 million pound business. And I can see it between the 10 million pound business and the 50 million pound business. Right the way back from startup all the way through to running tens of millions of pounds of business, there's certain commonalities that you might find in all these people. And there's a thread sometimes of entrepreneurism. And it's not that it's different. It just is built upon at every level and it needs to be built upon in order to continually grow the business. But you'll also find that some of the earlier tactics and strategies, some of the thoughts and some of the opinions and even the beliefs that business owners have in their first 100K just aren't even present when they're in their multiple hundreds of turnover or even in a million pound plus mark. And I'm sure if you went to the CEO of a multi-billion pound conglomerate, you'd see the same thing. Certain similarities that runs through all levels where they're built upon, enhanced and developed. And there's certain things that just don't even exist in that in their psyche. And equally, you'll find things that 
are in the bigger businesses that the smaller businesses haven't even thought about yet. You know, they're just not seeing the world in that way. I once ran a session and I got a collection of my members together and I had businesses in there that were, you know, literally just starting out. They were in their first kind of 10 grand turnover phase. I had businesses that were doing multiple five figures, so 20, 30, up to about 50,000. I had businesses that were doing 100 or so grand. I had businesses that were doing the sort of quarter of a million to half million. And then I had businesses that were doing a million pound plus. And I had them in one room and I had them on their table. So I had all of the, you know, the sort of 10 granders, you know, those kind of guys, they were all on one table. The 20 to 50 K is they were on one table, 50 to 100, one table, et cetera. And I posed a number of questions And these weren't business related questions. These were like questions around how they think, how they perceive. And I wanted to share with them. And the one certainly at the the lowest end of the spectrum in terms of turnover had the most to gain from this exercise. However, they also found it obviously to some degree the most uncomfortable because nobody likes being the smallest business in the room. Nobody likes to feel like they're not making it happen or doing it. However, that discomfort actually offers the most benefit to the businesses that were doing the least amount of turnover. Makes sense? So it's a huge opportunity, and some of them did find it a little bit uncomfortable. There's no question. But here's what came out, and it was fascinating. It was little questions about, you know, how much is too much? You know, just questions like that. You know, how much is too much? And then letting them just go and work on their tables and collectively come up with an answer that they agreed upon, And then they would present that answer back to the room and we would listen to how each table answered those questions. And it was absolutely enlightening to see the thinking and the thought processes and the perceptions that the smaller businesses had compared to the bigger businesses. And at each stage, you could see it. And certain of these aspects, they were shared. So, for example, the idea that, you know, how much is too much You can see, obviously, that, you know, at a 50K business, they may have a very different idea of what that is compared to someone that's doing, like, you know, three, four, five, ten million. Asking a question, for example, around sales. You know, now every one of those tables, in my group at the end of the day, you know I bash sales all day long if you're listening to this podcast. So everyone in this room is constantly doing sales and I'm pushing them to enhance sales and do more sales and certainly at least do the sales they need to to get the results that they want. But actually, their perception of sales changes considerably. So in the, you know, the 10Kers and up to the sort of 50Kers, you know, a lot of those people had some real hangups around selling, you know, some real personal beliefs that selling was greedy or bad or imposing themselves or rude or whatever it might be. And then you went through the ranks. And I remember some of the business owners like around the 100K mark, and it was kind of like, well, you know, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. And then you get to the bigger businesses and they just say, sales is how you grow your business, right? Sales is, that's it, sales, right? Sales is a constant thing. It constantly improves your sales because that is the thing that's going to grow your business. And I'm not saying there was anything particularly different, but it was certainly built upon at each level. So the 10, 20, 30, 40 K is there like, yeah, I do it because you tell me to do it. I know it's important, which is very different to someone sitting there saying, yeah, I know it's absolutely needed. Two, at the other end of the spectrum, saying sales is the thing that drives things. It's a subtle difference, but, and it's not just like having that as a thought, it's personifying that in who you are as a business owner. And obviously it will go out and it will change how your business is set up. It will change the psyche, not only of you, but the psyche of your business as a whole and its opinions towards sales. Now we did this with many different things, including like work ethic in terms of hours, And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes smaller businesses don't really understand the amount of sacrifice that it takes to create a successful business. By the time you get to a business that's doing hundreds, and certainly by the time you get to a business that's doing millions and multiple millions, you really understand what it takes to grow a business. And when you look at business owners that are doing a million pound plus, you know, when you ask them what they think is a normal, typical working week, you know, you typically might find a different idea of what is hard work compared to a business doing 20, 30, 40K. So maybe you start your business out wanting a lifestyle business, you have a job, you don't like your job, you thought, you know what, I'll do it for myself, I can you know, enjoy my work, do the kind of work I want to do, earn the money I want to earn, and you're going for that freedom, and you don't have to get on a Monday morning, and you don't have to do anything really, and you know, there's this idea that 
if I have to go back and do a 40 hour work week, that somehow is really hard work because that's what I left in the first place. That's not why I do my business. Very quickly, as you start to go up the ranks, you start to go from your 10 to 20, 30 to 100 to multiple hundreds to a million, you realize that, you know, your week starts with a 40 hour work week. You know, it starts from that and then you fit everything else in around that. And you'll see so many successful businesses and they will not absolutely even flinch at a 60 hour work week. Like that's a typical work week. And you'll find many business owners that absolutely will consider an 80 hour work week, maybe not even to be normal, but certainly something to be expected to do at certain times. And it changes how you approach work. You see, if you think 40 hours a week, and some of you potentially aren't even doing 40 hours a week, you know, I mean, in in corporate and that, it's a 35 hour, 37 and a half hour week. Therefore, when you work for yourself, you know, working from 10 till 3 or 10 till 4 feels like, you know, like a reasonable amount of work. And if you have to go and do a 9 to 5 for yourself, that feels like hard work. I mean, I get it. I get it. But that's going to absolutely hold your business back. It's going to absolutely cap your business. So if you don't change how you perceive hard work and how you view hard work, and if you don't change your perceptions around those areas, you're going to be the one that holds the business back because you're not going to be free to do what you need to do to hit a million pound plus, which I'm telling you now is a fuckload more than 35 or 37 and a half hours a week. There's no way around it. I know we all want the quick fix, the easy route. I know we all bought the four hour work week thinking, how can I do a week of work in, you know, by lunchtime on a Monday? I get it. We all did it, right? And then very quickly you realize, and when you've, you know, especially when you're talking to someone like me, where I've personally mentored now well over 400 business through Bigger, Bright, Bolder, through my success groups and my masterminds. And I'm telling you now, no one has ever done it. No one has ever got to millions and multiple millions without working their ass off. So if you want to create a successful business, you not only have to do what successful businesses do, but you have to become what successful business owners are. And you have to change some of what you are, enhance some of what you are. You're going to have to ditch some of that shit that's holding you back. And you're going to have to take on some new stuff that you haven't got right now. This is why it's absolutely imperative that you work on all fronts at all times. Yes, you want to work on your business, push your business, drive your business, enhance your business, level up your business. But you also want to push yourself as an entrepreneur, gain some business skills, change your entrepreneurial perspective on What's a big deal? What's a small deal? What you can expect as a business owner? All these sorts of things. And you're going to have to level up as an individual, as a person. You might have to change your work ethic. But to change your work ethic, you're going to need to change your dialogue around what hard work is. You're going to have to change your perspective on what hard work is. And of course, this is for all areas of life, all areas of entrepreneurism and all areas of business. You know, you have to change your perspective on sales. And you're going to have to keep upgrading your perspective on sales and your attitude towards sales, as well as potentially upgrading your skills and abilities around sales. So I want you to consider this for a moment, right? I want your business to be growing so fast that you are fighting to keep up. That's okay. Fighting to keep up is good. I kind of want you then to get ahead of that, right? So that you're ahead of your own business growth. But I'm telling you now, When you're in a group like mine, when we're really pushing extreme growth and we're going for doubles every year, it's very possible your business is going to outpace you at certain times. So you need to make sure that you consistently have yourself in an environment that you continually have accessible to you that entrepreneurial development and that personal development. If you do not have that in place, if you don't have that around you, then I have created the environment for you. And without going into a big old sales pitch or anything else, I'm just telling you now, if you appreciate that, yes, you need to continually develop yourself as an individual, as an entrepreneur, and you need to continually keep improving your business in order to get the growth and the success that you want. The first step is really simple. If you're a business and you're not yet doing 100K, why not go and check out my six-figure fast track? It's completely free of charge. I've created this specifically with the five-figure service-based business in mind. You might be doing 10, 20, 30, 40, 50K. What's it going to take to hit 100 grand or more in 12 months or less? That webinar is going to take you through the mindset you need to have in place, the business model you need to have in place, and the methodology you need to have in place, the day-to-day activity that you need to be focusing on, 
more importantly, the stuff you should be actually not doing in order to fast track your business growth. If you're already doing over 100K, then come and talk to us about our own extreme growth masterminds that I've already shared with you. This lady is a member of this. And I said she's gone from 50 to 100. She's gone from 100 to 180, 180 to over 400 grand this year. And she's going to continue to grow. If you are doing over 100 grand and you want to know how you can potentially become a part of our Extreme Growth Masterminds, you can email Tracy with an E, T R A C E Y dot Miller at biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk. I've got her email address also in the description below so you can contact her, talk to her, discuss with her how masterminds might be able to help you get the extreme growth you want in your business. We are here to serve, we are here to help businesses on their entrepreneurial journeys. I want you to have extreme growth. To get extreme growth, you need to level up as a person, as an entrepreneur, and of course, you need to level your business up. Nice one, guys. I look forward to speaking to you next time. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development, and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, be successful. Leveling up, extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up.